Okay. All right, let's get started at seven o'clock. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Water Pollution Control Authority meeting. Tonight is Wednesday, March 17th. We have Mark, Nancy, Quinn, Christian, Joe. It's tough because you move around as people come in and out. <laughs> and we have, uh, with a warm welcome back to Ron Drew, welcome back to the commission. Thank you. I wish I could say it's good to see you, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe next month. Maybe next month. Okay, we have an agenda that's been posted. If there are no proposed changes to tonight's agenda, we'll proceed. As is Sheila, are, can you hear us all? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I can. Okay. Great. And thank you for being with us. Uh, first item is the approval of the January 20th meet, uh, meeting minutes. Uh, you may recall I held this up. Uh, I wanted to go back and have a review of the the actual. I believe that the minutes accurately reflect um, what was discussed. And what the motion was, um, so um, we can uh, we can proceed if there's a motion to approve those. Go forward. I'll like make a motion to approve the uh, January minutes. Your second. I can second it. Second by Nancy. All in favor? Those who were there. Aye. This is Quinn. Aye. This is Quinn. Aye. I can't remember if I was there or not. Mm -hmm. Quinn, Christian, Nancy, Mark, and Joe. <laughs> Moving on to the February 17th May meeting minutes. Your motion? Uh, Matt, welcome. So moved. A motion from Nancy to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mike Joe, in favor of approval of the February 17th meeting minutes. Aye, Nancy. Aye, Joe. Aye, Quinn. Aye, it's Dane. Okay. Okay. Matt and um and Christian, I, I applaud and and Bill wearing green tonight. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patty's Day, everybody. Yes, yeah. happy St. Patrick's Day. Okay, so for new business tonight, we have a uh, a return of a uh, of a project that was approved a few years ago. It's relative to 150 units at 4480 Black Rock Turnpike. Um, they're looking for an extension, a, a two year extension. I, pres I presume it's a two year um, extension. Is there anyone here from 4480 Black Rock? Hi, uh, yes. My name is Avon Bauer. I'm representing the owners of 4480 Black Rock. Mr. Bauer, welcome. Thank you. So, uh, basically, the uh, rundown is the owners just didn't have enough time to uh, prepare the documents um, to get a full approval through PNZ and all the others, all the other departments, and. Um, they didn't get a chance to obtain their permits, therefore. So um, we're looking for a two year extension to the to the uh, approvals. Nothing has changed. It's still 150 units. And uh, the last approval was, I think, spring of 2019. So we're just looking for the two year extension. Bill, is there any um, update from the department? Are there any, any uh, has anything material um, taken place over the last couple of years? Um, not that I, I, I know we discussed it with, I discussed it with Chris today and he said he had nothing, nothing to add at this time. Uh, he had, um, uh, no reason to, uh, to think that the extension wasn't warranted. Okay. Any comments or questions from the commission? Okay. Your motion. I'll make the motion, Mr. Chair. I'd like to uh, make a motion to extend the uh, approval for the uh, 150 unit development at 4450 Black Rock Turnpike 
for two additional years. Uh, again, with the caveat that in two years, if it's still not uh, uh, ready for development, uh, they'd have to come back to the commission. Stop disappearing. Is there a second? Second. Quinn, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think I heard uh, uh, unanimous eyes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item is the uh, discussion on one and fifty nine post road for a new building proposal to impact the re relocation of the east trunk and sewer line and the easement location. Bill, what's the setup, sir? Well, from what I understand, they're looking at uh, relocating their building to the, the back of the property. Uh, I think originally they were gonna propose to build a building with a garage underneath. Um, since that time, the plan has changed. They're going with a, a full um, foundation the building parking on the sides and that would cause us to the the building would be directly over the sewer line so we would have to come up with a, a plan to either relocate the sewer line or build the building directly over the sewer line okay that's the conceptual drawing we have right now yeah chris chris and i were out there today and i see uh mr russo is on the line today too so um we were wondering if there's there any possibility of them moving the building up to the front of the property um, conceptually looking at that and this may that might not impact this the uh, sewer line at all yeah so for the sake of the commission um a, a bit of history here this has been um with us for for as long as i can remember um i think one of my first meetings which would have been about 100 meetings ago, um, there was a discussion as to why we would never allow a building to sit on top of one of our sewer mains. Uh, and it may very well have been on this particular location. Uh, we have an easement right now um, with one post road Fairfield that clearly indicates that there's not to be a building put built on top of this. Uh, main and Bill, correct correct me if I'm wrong. This is one of our major sewer lines, correct? Yeah, this is the East Trunk Line. Yeah. So, um, so I think I can I can I can state on behalf of the the commission that putting a building on top of the line isn't an option, uh, but we're 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 certainly open to discussion on uh, on other uh, possibilities. So I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to defer to is there someone from the uh, development here? That's me, Ray Rizzio. Hi, Ray. How are you, folks? Um, yeah, it really comes down to we originally were going to put um, some apartments on the property um, with the bevy of apartments and the number of apartments coming into town. Um, we we also we had the opportunity to work with a company called Strong Start, very successful. Um, preschool daycare facility and we thought we could build them a very attractive home on the lot at 59 post road and we've been very co uh unfortunately brian carey's not here we're very cooperative with the town with regard to um moving the easement i know the easement ran through our property there's going to the replacement of the trunk line we're trying to get we're kind of at a standstill as to whatever we can do with the property because we can't we're trying to design a project and we would have thought that the new trunk line would have been in already, but it's not. And we, we just need some guidance because what we'd like to do is build this, you know, um, this building for strong start and just request that the, the, that the, the new line go along the property line and more along, more along the, Parallel to the parallel to the um, more parallel to the post road along the front setback. Um, nothing has been. I, I don't think it. I'm not even sure if the, the. I don't think the project's been awarded. But in the meantime, we're in a situation where we have a line that's going to be replaced, and we kind of have a moving target 
on a future line. And so we're kind of at a standstill and, um. We really talked to Chris about we're, you know, we're ready to, we're trying to design a building, but we really don't know where this line is going to go. Um, it's interesting that there's a 20, there's supposed to be a 20 foot easement from our, let's call it our Western property line. And for some reason, the design of the, is instead of the, the pipe going through the middle of the easement would normally would be, which is you'd put the pipe in the middle of the easement and then 10 feet on each side would be for work. For some reason, the pipe sits 20 feet, sits right on the edge of the easement line where kind of our building is anticipated to go. So all we would like to do is basically work with the town so that the easement doesn't interfere with our future construction and basically stays within the setback lines where we're not going to build anyway. And then some kind of understanding from the town as to any kind of timing because um, you know, we all know how sensitive the world is, uh, with regard to development. And when you have opportunities, um, it's hard to just leave a prop piece of property vacant while the, we find out where the town wants to actually put this sewer pipe. That's kind of what, yeah. where we're at. And Chris and I were looking for guidance as to where we can move this, um, and talking to Brian, we've all we did this, you know, really uh, in a cooperative manner. Nobody looked to. We did it without any not look, you know, without compensation. We did it without uh, requiring any condemnation, with the understanding that the town would with, work with us with regard to any future development on the vacant parcel. So now we're kind of at a standstill. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a possibility of putting a building there. Uh, with a very good tenant on a long term, the long term stay, and uh, and um, we would just like to, you know, kind of have some direction from the WPCA or dealing with staff as to making sure this easement won't affect us in, in the future developing in it, and then also get some kind of timetable. So because we have this huge sewer easement running through the middle of our property. Yeah, no, I, I can appreciate that. That line's been there you know, prior to the purchase of the property and it's been and it's been discussed. Quite a bit over the last 5 or 6 years. Yeah, yeah. The, um, um, in, in terms of timing, when the East trunk line interceptor, um, it, it, it could be easily years before that's complete. At least a year and a half, at least 18 months. Um, there's uh there's certain protocols that the town needs to go through all all agencies of the town relative to soil soil testing um review of of um of the projects um so that's not going to that's not necessarily going to sync up with with your development plans like when then we're in an issue where you have either we want you to either have to we need a plan for one easement or the other in other words, if we're otherwise, we're just we 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 never intended to have ourselves, and I don't, and I mean this nicely, held hostage by either an old easement and then a new easement that runs basically both of them run through our property so that we can't do anything with it. Yeah. And I understand you don't want us to build over the existing pipe. Um, originally, we were a. a allowed to span it. In other words, we'd have parking underneath uh, the building above, but um, yeah, what you're no, basically no. telling me is stand by and <laughs> we'll get back to you with a, with a timetable. No, no, I'm not suggesting that at all. I, I, have, I have great empathy that, um, that you have a potential tenant and you want to move forward. And I think we have to decide where we're going to put the line so that you can you can uh, modify your schematics accordingly and, and go forward. Um, I'm, just right. not, I'm just not quite sure how to do that right now. Okay. All right. uh, Ray, have you, I, I don't know if you heard at the beginning of the, the um, agenda item, uh, is there any way of moving your building up towards the post road? Well, here's the, we, we don't know where the new line is going to be. So I'm trying to figure if we knew that the new line was going to be along parallel to the post road 
along the front of our property and then proceed along the western boundary line, then I can uh, I can try and jockey a building in between the two lines. But currently, the new line also cuts perpendicular cuts cuts like on a diagonal across the front of our property. So it leaves us with like a jigsaw. I was out there um, this morning with Chris, and we were looking at different different uh, scenarios. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's already a 36 inch line. So if if we can move your building up towards the post road, because according to your schematic, you have the playground on the back end. Awesome. Ray, can you hear me? Yeah, one minute. Joe, so I'll get to you in a second. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm not I'm technically challenged. I'm thank God I'm not an engineer. <laughs> the good thing I'm not in charge of putting in the line because I got I don't know if you'd be able to build anything. Um we, yeah, we would move the building a little forward if we can if we knew that the future easement was going to come more parallel to the parallel to the street and then you know not make a right turn but kind of clip a corner instead of that swath across the front. Does that makes sense. Oh, yes, we were looking at that, but we were also looking at if you come up forward, we could leave the line in place. Yeah, that's fine. But I just, I just, I just wanted to try and get the future. I'll, I'll, I'll work with our engineers see if we can push the building forward, and then if on the future line, I know that we can try and we're not be so hamstrung between the two lines because I, my understanding, you're going to abandon the other line in place, which is concrete, and and then we're going to push. Well, well, what I'll do is I'll see if I can get the person to our engineer to push the building forward. And then come back with you folks to see, you know, if the future line can making sure that the future line doesn't get in the way. Oh. Joe, you had a question. Uh, no, I, it was okay. going to be a, okay. it'll have to be resolved the way Ray Green talked about it before it makes any sense. My question makes sense. Yeah, you know, I, I think we have to pick a path. You know, we, we, can, we can't hold the hostage. Um, there, there's no doubt about that. Um, right, so what I'll, why don't I do this? If we can continue this to next month, and what I'll try and do is get an engineer to take a look at uh, pushing the building forward, and then maybe we can make if we, and then we'll find out if it's necessary to make a modify, modification of the proposed easement for the new line forward yeah, and, or or to the east. Yes. Or maybe we can, and and once he looks at that, maybe we can meet, meet on site and talk about it. You got it. I appreciate it. I I I I I, I thank you for your time. We're just trying to. You know, you get somebody and it's a real quality tenant. I think that's going to be good for the area. Um, I, I just hate to have it pass by because we're we're kind of in flux for the next two year and a half or so. No, we we we're not gonna we're not gonna hold the hostage. Okay, well, I appreciate it. Thank um, you, hey, Mark. I think you had just mentioned it, but uh, I was curious also how realistic is it to flip the east parking lot with the building to move the building just um, roughly to the, just to the east of where it currently is to try to get it out of the existing easement. Well, what it may be, what I can do is I, there's, that's, I'm gonna have them look at things because maybe the idea is one of the things I may have certainly a hardship to go get a variance if I've got to push the building a little further one way or the other. So um, this, this, is, um, this is something, I'll have the engineer relook at everything. And if we can, you could just leave me a spot next month. We'll come back before you next month. It, at looking at the property right uh, okay. adjacent to it, the building there, somewhere up, almost the same exact um, line. Okay, bring it up that far. All right, folks. I apologize. Believe it or not, I'm on the conservation commission meeting yep. at seven o'clock. Also, <laughs> so they're calling me for Sasco Hill Road. So I got to jump over there. But if we can, okay. we'll, we'll, I promise you, we'll get you a revised Thank plan you. next month. Thanks. I'm going to move to the other computer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, no action taken on item B. Item C is a uh, discussion of draft agreement between the Country Club of Fairfield and the town to accept a new Fourth Main on Sasco Hill Road. Um, Bill, do you want to walk us through this? Uh, we've been in contact with the um... Town attorney, and he's driven up, uh, drew up some 
provisions for the sewer extension and connection agreement? Is that what we're looking? Yeah, that's what we're looking at. I want to thank Joe for doing an awful lot of work on this over the last couple of weeks, playing the role of uh, commission counsel. <laughs> so, 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 so we're looking at, you know, obviously the, the properties coming in and connecting the sewer once the connection is made, uh, uh, the town will own the um, pipe in the ground uh, under the town road, and then the um, homeowners would be responsible for their lateral connections, the holding tanks, their um, grinder pumps, and, and all the accelerators, accelerators for, to the to the um, pumping systems. Is that what your uh, yeah? So that so show was? yeah. So what so what we have in 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 uh, in our file folder is a draft sewer agreement. Um, <laughs> relatively straightforward. Um, it's kind of um, cl cleaning up a, a loose end, which is that the Country Club of Fairfield installed this line at their own expense, and conceptually they are going to turn over the responsibility of that to the WPCA, and that comes into play um, later this evening as we have an applicant who would then like to tap, tap into this. The thought was that we would bring it to the commission tonight for any comments or questions prior to forwarding that onto the Country Club of Fairfield. <clears throat> and again, that was drafted by council for the town of Fairfield. And the country club is a, is amenable to this. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> they were told they were told when we first approved it that the town would take ownership. It's in our minutes okay. from uh, the, about a year and a half ago. So okay. yeah, I don't remember it certainly <laughs> from even everything we've documented. So there should be no issue. Yeah. Okay. And the tap the, the ownership would be just <clears throat> the pipe under the town road. The ownership is the town is going to take ownership of a pipe that's on their town property. That's basically the concept. We don't we don't let other people build on town property and then the property uh, turns over to their ownership. So it's our property that uh, they built the pipe on that we gave permission to. Okay. We'll go forward and uh, share that with the Country Club of Fairfield and revert next month. And um, seeing no hands up, we shall proceed um, to item D, update on the proposed uh, fiscal year 2021-2022 budget. Uh, this is not the budget review that the commission is accustomed to going through. This is um, a document that Bill shared with the Board of Selectmen. Is that correct, Bill? Last week, uh, the Board of Selectmen, yes, and um, uh, the Board of Finance tomorrow night. <laughs> okay, so it's a little unusual. It's kind of sharing with those two bodies, and then we will uh, we'll provide input into. Um, into the budget, of course, but also in terms of provide input and guidance on what the sewer rate is going to be at a later date. Um, any comments or questions on the document that's been shared? I'll just bill if you don't want to do it, I'll say it. It looks like it's a flat expense budget. From last year, correct. So everybody knows. Okay. So no action required tonight, just a heads up to the commission. The, um, I think the more robust conversation <laughs> next will be the discussion on additional funding required for the hardening project. And we have, we're fortunate to have Laura Foley here tonight to, um, to walk us through this. Ron, you probably remember this one back when it was just an idea. 
Or it, it, it strikes me that it looks like $1.9 million in additional expenses, but um, I'll defer to you on how you want to walk us through that. Did you want me to start walking you through or, or Bill? Yeah. I mean, the one point um, I'd be happy to. All righty, let me get the right paperwork. I, at the end of the day, I sent out an updated to Joe that I don't know if you shared it with the other commissioners. Joe, did you get that? I um, did get it. Just, just the current. I did, okay. I did not share. I did not notice it was only me getting it. I yeah. Okay. So, as as you're all aware, um, this project morphed into a bit more than we ever anticipated due to the soil contamination that was discovered on the site, and their historical PCBs and other obstructions. Um, I don't know if if Bill has in in your prior meetings what what he has um, discussed about it, but we're we're finding strips of of rubber, so we can't drill through the rubber. They have to excavate this these rubber strips, most likely from fairprene, and they have PCBs in them. So all of this stuff um, and the PCB soils has got to be managed properly. And that has jacked up the, the cost of the handling of the environmental issues and getting the proper LEPs involved that to advise the town and um, come up with plans on how to manage and educate. I don't want to say educate Holzner, but make sure that they do everything adequately and according to all the regulations, EPA and Connecticut DEEP. Um, and you may have questions about the delays that we've incurred, which we shut the project down in July once the EPA um, had we had we had to come up with a plan to let the EPA know how we were going to proceed. And until we we um, decided and got a not approval, but a, a blessing that we were going to provide a clean corridor, test every five foot grid wherever we dig into the ground. So those environmental testing costs, the, the, the lab charges have escalated the cost of this project um, tremendously. And once we finally did get some sense of um, acceptance from the EPA and Connecticut Deep, you know, we were allowed to start up again in September sometime. So we did incur some delay charges on the contractors, the three contractors, Holzner, Earthworks, and Helical. So when we started up, you know, they, they continued to, to find obstructions that had to be removed if they were in groundwater that had soil content, that had any kind of PCB contamination, that groundwater had to be treated um, and, and filtered properly and then disposed of um, filtration medium like charcoal has to be disposed of as PCB um, waste. So, you know, we had to, we had to provide a, a filtration system for the dewatering activity, which is still on site there because uh, they had issues with trying to decontaminate it through the, the winter, everything froze up. Um, so all of these things, unfortunately, caused delays and the environmental issues caused, you know, the, the, the price to escalate quite a bit. Um, Brian Carey, when we did go, you could see the original cost of the, I think of the entire project was about $7.2 million and he had a contingency fee and a contingency cost of just over a million. And we have just about used that up. If you total up, I think everybody's got some of the spreadsheets that I had sent, but, but change orders, um, Wait a minute, let me get the right one. The first six change orders. I'm sorry, the first nine totaled one million forty seven thousand dollars. So that alone used up most of the contingency. Um, we also have extensions that we have to not honor, but we, we have amendments to environmental oversight and administration on tie and bond and in or I'm sorry, construction administration and oversight by tie and bond bond as well as the environmental oversight by tie and bond. Um, 
to cover the cost of the additional environmental testing that that's required to, to complete the project, which I didn't include in the latest uh, spreadsheet, Joe, that I sent you today. I just did the construction cost because I think the question that, that Chris had asked me was, what was the original contract price, which was five million three fifty nine four hundred and seventy dollars. Um, with with the approved and paid con, uh, COs, the change orders were up to six million four hundred and seven thousand that we've paid. The latest spreadsheet, we I think you all have um, what we foresee as the remaining work to be done. Um, totals another. Oh, let's see. An unpaid another million one point one million one sixty three. One sixty three, Laura. Exactly yeah. one million one sixty three. Three hundred and fifty dollars or so. Yeah, so three forty-eight ninety-nine. Let's not get excited. Yeah. Three forty-eight ninety-nine. <laughs> Laura, that's what, just the construction what, cost. What percent of the of the hardening of of the steel is in the ground roughly? Is it forty percent? Eighty percent. Eighty percent. Yeah. There, they, they, there's a total of about twenty-seven hundred feet. About twenty-six hundred fifty or so. Feet and they have 450 feet left. And I and I know the question also came up about well maybe we should have just put the put the ring the the, the flood control of uh, the flood wall if you want to call it that just around your facility the the water treatment plant north side south side and I figured today that it's actually a shorter run by about 180 feet to go the way that we're going, protecting the fire training, the animal control and the conservation building, because we're tying into the high ground that's next to uh, conservation, you know, the earth, the Denali, we care Denali. And if you were to cut it off at the fire training, you know, where the clarifier are on the south side, you know, it came across the yard there, and then you'd have to cross the street and then you'd have to encompass the compost facility. That's actually 180 feet longer than this layout that we're doing now. So I, I just wanted to let everybody know that because I, I know that has been discussed um, and, frequently, and, you know, in the past. Yeah, it, it, I'm not sure that gets us a lot, a lot done by going back and second guessing what we're No, saying. no, because the, this is a shorter run. Yeah. Believe it or so, not. Let me ask the the cost of shutting a project down mm -hmm. is is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars already. How do we get comfortable that we have a clear path to complete the 450 feet without incurring more shutdown charges? Because they have probed, we we know we know what we're involved with on on the north side. There's 250 200 feet that gap. That's that that significant environmental hazard area that has got the PCBs, and that was where they formerly had sludge drying beds. That you know, we're learning an awful lot about how this treatment plant operated in the 50s. You know, they took the sludge, they spread it out, and that sludge had PCBs in it from most likely factories or whoever was dumping their waste into it, and it got into the worked its way through. They take it, they spread it out and dry it, and they left it there. So we hit it and, um, you know, it's it's in that whole stretch. So we know how we have to manage that and we pretty much know it's it's got to be removed. So the EPA has directed us that we do not have to dewater. We don't have to excavate below the water line. They, they made it a lot easier for us to um, manage doing the construction there. And we, we know what we're going to be dealing with there. And we know the cost to manage and, and remove the soil. Now on the other side behind the conservation workshop, we have another 250 feet or so left there. And we know that there are obstructions. We know that there's buried tree stumps. They've been staying in front of the project. Um, Halsner, they have to provide a clean corridor before the contractor helical comes back and starts to drive the sheeting again. So they've been digging and you know they've been finding wood, tree stumps, tree limbs, and I think the latest response was we're going to leave it and we're going to try to see if we could um, drive the piles through it. Um, and if we do have to remove it, we do have a significant amount in here for additional soil management charges for three. I'm sorry. 
I think they're four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, four four hundred thousand. Right. Thousands. Four. We have four. Well, remaining clean quarter excavation and desoil soil management. I have four hundred thousand there. I just updated this today. Some of these numbers are a little right. Those that soil management charges through February, Joe. We've we've got that change order. We got it today, or actually yesterday. Um, that's what we've done to date. Future what stuff we haven't done. You know, you know, and this could be less. It, it hopefully it's going to be less than the four hundred thousand. Um, no chance. Our contractor, <laughs> no, well, our tie and bond estimated two hundred and fifty thousand, and I'm like, let's. No, we're we're going to up it, and I upped it another um one fifty on top of the two fifty. So I put in four hundred thousand there. And I also have soil management and dewatering for the outfall pipe where the actual sanitary outfall line from the treatment plant, we have to go, we have to excavate around the pipe and pour concrete collar, almost a grade beam un, around the top of the pipe and under the bottom of the sheets. So we have to do some work there and I have 50,000 for that. And that pipe is a 30, 36 or 48 inch pipe. I'm not sure the size of it. So, Laura, you, 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 you jumped to another project. So let, let me, well, no, well, the, no this is She's all part of the same project. project. On the outfall. Well, those numbers are in this project. No, no, no. The outfall <laughs> is where it's going under the steel sheet pile wall. Ah, different outfall. Before it gets to Fairfield Beach Road, which is another okay. project. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, so I, I have in our 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 you know time bond has reviewed the the pending possible change orders that they could foresee. That, so that's the remaining work for the steel sheeting. We know that there's contaminated soil where they have to do some of the um, catch basin, and that's in that lump sum item for the soil management charges. We also have to. Um, finish up with the road. And right now we're doing the soil testing there. If you've been down there, you've seen the geo probe down there today and they were there Monday and they should have finished up today. So they have to test the entire area where the soil is gonna be placed on top of the road to make, so we know what's under the road. If it's contaminated, we have to let the EPA know. But we don't have to remediate that. We just have to let them know what's there, so. Um, Let's uh, that fee, so so that that fee, where and Ty and Bond is doing it. We they 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 haven't been had their their um their their proposal, their amended uh, amendment to their proposal for environmental that hasn't been approved yet. I hope this all gets approved. Tonight, so it can go to the board of finance and the the in in the RTM or maybe just the board of finance. I'm not sure exactly how many people have to approve it, but but they they are doing that work um, because if they don't get that work done, that has to be tested this month in April, hopefully beginning to second week of April. Um, Helico is coming back, and they could start doing the ground improvements. So um, knowing that this project has to get finished. And knowing that we were on a critical path, now we want to get that done before they start building these two humps in the road, which is really the last piece of the puzzle to complete the entire flood um, control structure. And that's all that really needs to get done, other than you know internal getting all the pumps connected and and um, the internal the the storm drains inside. Laura, let me let me ask you to pause for a second and and uh, see if there's comments or questions from the commission. So, if Laura, if Joe, you know, obviously, if mm -hmm. they, if they're, in summary, we're um, we need a million one sixty three. And well, then, that's just for construction. And then a, an additional five hundred and fifty two on top of that, the pending COs, right? So about a million seven, a million eight. Would be no. the additional costs? No, that's that's if that's with the pending COs. This is just for construction. Okay. That's just for construction. So the total for construction is the one million one sixty three in change orders. We have the money to continue with the normal construction 
all the schedule of, value, uh, of values for all those other items that, you know, were normally have to be con completed, you know, filling in the road for the humps, driving the sheeting, putting in the storm drains. This covers all the extra, the soil management, um, the soil remediation, the, providing the clean corridor. So, so let me ask the question a little differently. I see a lot of quizzical looks, including myself. What is the number above, uh, we've spent the contingency, the million. Right. So what is the number in total that you're estimating we're going to need to vote on or, or determine, discuss? Okay. That, that would be the estimate of additional cost due. Then at the bottom of that um, spreadsheet that I think you all have, it's the 1,408,000. million four. Right. That does not include that Gabian wall. Right. That's another 400, right? Well, with contingencies, I added contingencies, oh. 451. It's another 451. Okay. So. A million uh, 850. So it's that is one if you included that gabian wall it'd be one million eight hundred and sixty thousand one hundred and forty dollars okay 104 thank sorry thank you so those are the differences now um some of the town administrators were going to go out and take a look at the gabian wall um this this is just to provide screening for the fire training center and they could there's there's money that the fire department does have for trees that forty thousand dollars that they have for trees that they got a grant for and they and chief mccarthy did go out with jeff minder our tree warden and they looked and they saw that they could plant trees right at grade that would provide screening maybe not on day one but maybe They'll, they'll have some screening immediately and as a year, you know, next year, the trees will grow two feet. And then, so they're going to put the screening of the larger trees on the inside of the wall, on the fire training side, and on the outside of the wall, on the waterward side, they'll screen the wall with shrubs. Um, so that's, that's the plan. It won't cost um, the town or the WPCA anything. But the Gabian wall will, as you could see, that price was the total with contingencies now that also includes soil testing, soil management, and I think just to do the soil testing was about thirty-six thousand dollars by time bond because they'd have to go out there and they'd have to test, you know, every five feet where they're going to put a shovel in the ground. And at that wall, I think was a three hundred and three hundred fifty foot long yep. gabion wall. Yep. Yes. So it was expensive. So that's so why I pulled is, it this out. Is Quinn. So this is Quinn. Quinn I yes. see that it's it's two hundred thirty-five thousand dollars to put the Gabian wall and granular fill topsoil in it. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. That that was the bid price. Yes. But before and, we put it in, the soil's got to be tested. Yeah, mm -hmm. Right. So that's the ninety. Was that that's the ninety-six thousand seven hundred? Right. No. That's yeah. yes. Soil yep. management disposal of contamination is found yes. at yes. the yep. Gabion Wall site, right? Yes. And then I add so, that then there's, yep. So the 40,000 that's in your um, spreadsheet there also, that's really right. the 40,000 that mm -hmm. the fire department plans no. on doing. No, The 40,000 is no. just to buy the trees. Now the trees have got to get planted and the trees are going to be oh, elevated. To yes, because okay. they're going to have to be picked up. $40,000 to install. Yes, because these trees, are very large they're going to be eight to ten or ten to twelve foot high and the root balls are going to be you know two and a half foot diameter they have to be picked up with a crane set up over the wall and placed in this planting bed okay so they have to get a crane in there okay. so what okay look it, this is a silly question but is there an obligation for us to make the thing look pretty by landscaping this for the obligation was made seventy-five thousand. Yeah, the obligation was made a number of years ago by a former public works director. Um, they had a presentation to the Fairfield Beach neighborhood in March of 2018, and this is what they were shown. Um, my feeling is is that they were shown screening, and I think the town could provide screening, but in a different way. And I think the way that um, Jeff Minder proposes is adequate. 
because you're going to screen the wall. And they, you have to keep in mind, the people on Fairfield Beach Road, they're going to see the stone gabions. There's, those are going to be covered. So they're going to see about six foot high of stone gabion, you know, with the wire, and then the trees will be on top. At least this you're going to have with Jeff's proposal, Jeff Minder, you're going to have nice um, different kind of native shrubs planted along the base. They'll grow, they'll fill out and cover and soften the look of that wall. And then on top what, of that, on the other side, have, will be arborvitaes. Let, let, let me jump in, and, and I know there are a number of pr pr professionals waiting to, to present on other projects this okay. evening. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think this is probably an ongoing discussion over the next few months. What decision needs to be made tonight, if any? I think Bill, th I th I think maybe Bill could um, answer this. I know that are, is the town going to split this amount? Are you looking for them to approve half of what I think you should do is approve half of each of these numbers because it's either going to be the project with the Gabian wall or the project without the Gabian wall. Yes. So yes. I, Yes, that was the understanting from Tom Bremer that the, the, the PCA would cover half and the town would cover the other. And keep in mind, we also got the 3.6 million from the state Department of Housing through the mm -hmm. federal government. So. So, Bill, do you need a decision from the WPCA tonight to go forward? Yes, we do. I, I, we do because the longer we, we take, the, the longer this will get drawn out. The project will cost more. There'll be more yeah. mobilization and, 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 and so the contractors will come to the, the table. Additional 50% of 1.9 million. I think what Laura was saying was, was we need probably to, to approve both numbers depending on which way the town yeah. wants to go. Yes. The 1. 50 percent of either. Either almost the 1.9 or the 1. Four. Four. Okay. And that's above me. Joe would have to make that motion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, look, I, I, I think the town offering to cover half of it goes a long way in, in our decision making process. Just just to remind the chairman, the town has paid half every time there's been an overrun. We insisted on that back two years ago. And I congratulate you for that, Joe. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so the precedent has been set. So we're only yes. paying for half. That's my feeling. Yeah. So are we doing the half with the Gabian wall trees or without? We want two motions. I, I, I think two, just in case they decide to put yep. the Gabian wall in. This way, we don't have to so wait. It's going to cost yes. another 200,000, right? 200,000. It's going to cost another mm -hmm. 200,000 yeah, dollars. I, yeah, I think it's contingent upon whether the Gabian Ward is, is, is constructed or not. Right. Well, do you want me to do the motion without any numbers and just say we will pay the, make a motion to have the WPCA pay up to 50% of the additional construction overrun? Up to, yes, up to, up up to, to a maximum of 1.9. 700,000, up to a maximum of 700,000. Well, no, that's that would be if the Gabian Wall wasn't constructed. And then a second motion, we would pay up to uh, two hundred and twenty-five thousand if the wall was determined to be a necessity. Yeah, no, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. So for those commissioners who perhaps are in favor of the Gabian Wall, that provides them the opportunity to express their position on that. Could could I also say something real quick? It, that that also include includes the engineering fees too, the um, consulting fees, as well. Not only construction, but construction, oh, 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 oh. And oversight, and environmental. Construction, oversight, environment. Yep, and administration. So just. Can I, can I just have one clarification? Um, so all the bulk of this overrun is based on contamination, correct? Yes. Um, and was there any geotech done during detailed design or did somebody determine it wasn't necessary back then? They, 
They probed the site and they weren't looking for um, contaminated soil. They were just probing the site to see what kind of soil conditions existed because originally they were going to do the big earthen dike around the whole site, but the material was real marshy. So there would have been settlement and, and it wouldn't have worked. Um, and we discussed different options, different kind of walls, a combination hybrid type design. And it came up that the steel sheeting would be the, the best way to go. Minimal footprint. Um, we had tidal wetlands that we had to stay out of the coastal jurisdiction line runs right around the site there. So that is, uh, it's but they, well, they, did, they did not do any um, environmental yeah, sure. testing for it's any a, soil contamination. It's a great point. And we have Chris Pierce and Dennis Divert who will be uh -huh. discussing the plant upgrade. And that's certainly a consideration. Oh, yeah. Uh, on the front end, as well as the East trunk interceptor where we haven't done any geotech yet and and we've certainly learned our lesson well i think every project now we, we're going to have to do soil testing um yeah no matter particularly knowing the history of some of these sites yeah okay. so the floor is yours okay i'd like to make a motion to pay up to seven hundred thousand dollars to cover overruns for construction, oversight, environmental, and administrative costs for the hardening project. Is there a second? Second it. Second from Nancy. All in favor? Aye. Mark Do we, Quinn, aye. So I'm going to talk about Walters. Can, right. Am I here? Can I be? You yep. guys hear me? Yep. Um, so I, I don't know if it makes a difference, Joe, but by saying up to seven hundred thousand dollars, you're missing uh, an additional four thousand three hundred eighty-six eighty-two that would need to be covered um, as oh. as fifty percent. So if you want to be specific and to do the exact fifty percent, I can give you the exact numbers. Okay, I'll take the number out completely, Christian. Uh, I don't know. We, we have it on the floor right now. I'll just say up to 50%, Perfect. but not exceeding 725,000. Okay. So, um, we had a second on that from who? I'll second from Quinn, all in favor. Aye. We're voting on the second one, the second motion, the, the mo modified motion. Is there anyone opposed? Yes. Okay. Quinn. Go, go ahead, Joe. Is Quinn, Quinn opposed, you say? No, okay. I would be opposed to the to the 900. Okay, so so hold on a second. We're going to give you a shot. $52. Yep, we're, we're going to give you that opportunity in a minute. So the okay, second motion. So we just can I just ask the question before I make the motion? What is fifty percent of the screening or the uh, number? So Quinn had it nine hundred thirty thousand fifty one eighty two. Let's let's do nine fifty just so we're not having another emergency <laughs> commission meeting. So 950 is the number I should use. And you want to keep it specifically to the wall or do you want to just call it screening? Laura. Um, I would call it the, the Gabian wall and screening. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to have the WPCA pay up to, I'm not sure what the number is anymore, $470,000. Is that the number? We have to use no, 9 No, it'll be half of 186104. Yeah. Yes. It, yes. Yeah. $1,860,104. Divided by two. That number. Say 50. 
Uh, and have the WPCA pay up to 50% of that number for the Gabion wall and screening yep. for the hardening project. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. Christian, second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye, Quinn. Quinn is opposed. Okay. Thank you so much. Laura, thank you. Okay. Thanks for thank you very much. Okay. okay. Have a good night. You too. You too. Thanks, Laura. Okay. So moving on to old business, item A, uh, two and six Beacon Square. That was in front of us last month. Uh, the department requested a bit more time to review the flow analysis. Um, Bill, do you want to check in on that? Uh, yes, I, I, we discussed it today. Discussed it today again with Chris. Um, going forward, we don't see any, any issues with that. Okay. Comments or questions? Okay, relatively straightforward. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion, Mr. Chair. For the commission to accept the plan for two and six Beacon Square as submitted on 317 2021 for 33 residential units. The approval will be in effect for the two years with the understanding that the permit, if the permit is not issued within this two year period, the applicant will be required to request a subsequent two year renewal. The signing of the building permit by the WPCA staff shall be subject to the payment of the INI fee calculated at the current rate at that time of permit. Excellent. Is there a second? Second from Matt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This is Quinn. Aye. Sounds unanimous. <clears throat> Thank you very much. All right. Mr. Night. Chairman, Mark. point of order. Did, did we skip? Yes. Item F, or did that leave our agenda? No, we skipped under, item F. Uh, under new business. Yeah. Okay. My mistake. Um, Do we need it? I'd like to make a motion to move uh, item F of new business at the end of old business. Second. Let's go. I'll second. Bye. Okay, Bye. unanimous. Thank you, Joe, for sorry fixing that. <laughs> um, okay, so next in front of us to consider and act upon a request by the Huntington Company to connect seven new lots at 1143 Sasco Hill Road and possible nine existing houses to the four sewer main. And and to be clear, this is the the main that we discussed a short while ago that was installed by the country club of fairfield so we would take effective ownership of that and if this sub subdivision were to go forward the subdivision would install that the necessary infrastructure and tap into this uh, main that's on sasco hill road can we vote on this before those docks are signed? I'm sorry? Can we actually vote on this before the documents are signed? Uh, I think we I can think... if we put a contingency in here, dependent on those documents being executed by Country Club of Fairfield. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Now, so, why don't can we I get ask a question, Mr. Chair? Sir. Bill, how much? It sounds like this development also needs to build a pipe in the street that right. will uh, that will connect to the pipe that the Country Club of Fairfield put in the street, right? Correct. Okay, so that has to be put into this this motion also, right? And yes. then they have to turn ownership of that pipe over to us because it's in the yes. street. Okay. Just wanted to yes. clarify that. As you spoke to before, anything that's under the town road. Right. Okay. Just wanted to clarify that and get that in the minutes. And and kind of further to that, there's there's one house that is the that the house that's most adjacent or not most adjacent that is immediate immediately adjacent to 
the parking lot of the Sasco Beach. Is that included in this? Is is that house going to be afforded? Uh, um, I know the house you're talking about. I, I'm not sure if they're connected or not. I don't believe they are. Okay. Uh, I think they would be afforded the opportunity. Okay. Because I think that as, as we've learned from Carriage Drive, it, it's we should be thinking about this as we're putting pipes in the ground. And then there's also a town restroom that is right right there by the parking lot. Where does that waste go? Do you know? And is that something we should be thinking about ac providing access to? I I know the one you're talking about. I don't know if that's pumped, if that has a holding tank. Must be. And it's pumped. I don't see any other way that it can leave that yeah. facility. Okay. So I would I would assume now that's an assumption I could j double check with Chris tomorrow that okay. that it uh, it's a seasonal so it probably has a holding tank. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What? Attorney Russo's here, correct? Yes. Yes, Chair. Okay. What, what's the to... specific line of demarcation between what ends up becoming town property versus what's still owned by the country club? Is there either a meter or a valve or and, and it's I'm just wondering how vague it is between as far as like a pipe being underneath the road. I'm curious where I I, I think the uh the uh, so to speak the line in the sand is is the lateral line. They're responsible for their lateral line, no matter where it goes. Correct. That's the so way the agreement still under, reads. If it's still under the town road, it's and their lateral line, they're responsible for that. Okay. Right. Okay. What's the uh, what's the status on the project? Is this something that we 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 should move into planning stage for, or is this still a conceptual asking for a conceptual approval? Well, chair, we're we're currently um, we haven't submitted the formal subdivision application yet. It's currently on referral to the conservation commission. Um, and as it currently, I mean, the meeting's taking place right now, um, mm -hmm. but um, the uh, and then it will go back to planning and zoning to vote on the open space referral. Uh, they, they basically have an informal meeting on it and then we would submit the formal um, application to subdivision. But this is the plan that we're looking to move forward with. So it's. You know, th this will be the plan we submit for a subdivision application. So, Rob, you're amenable to putting the pipe in the street at your expense and a lateral connection. I don't know how many other houses are up there that would have to have a lateral connection, because I would require that for them to hook on to that pipe whenever they wanted to. Like right, so we're on the other side of Sasco Hill. We're proposing seven lots just on, for our subdivision, right. uh, our proposed subdivision. And um, Huntington says there's nine existing houses that could possibly connect. So we would, um, just like Country Club of Fairfield did, mm -hmm. we would we would do that for them for those nine houses. Right. That's that's what I'm asking. Okay. Yeah, I'm not so sure that those houses have an immediate lateral connection. I think that may entail putting in more pipe. So I think somebody needs to look into that. I think I think you're you're right, Chair. That there are I think these nine do have the ability. I do think there are more if you go down um, and take a left. You know, when you get to that kind of T intersection there, that that would need more line to access those additional houses. But I think if you take that left, isn't that a private road? Yes, yes, I believe so. So they could they they could you know the the I don't know if they have a, a road association or, or or what they have there but uh, um, they could uh, they come to you I guess to try to connect their houses as well add more line and connect their their house into it. Right. I'm not sure how many houses are are okay. on that section though. I'm just, I'm just 
uh, I'm thinking that your your scope and focus is really specific to 1143. Yeah, I mean, for, definitely, but there are, there are, uh, I mean, there, there are certainly houses that are from that section, uh, from Country Club of Fairfield to our property that, that could connect. Yeah, um, and to Joe's point, that would be providing the lateral mm -hmm. um, right. at, at, a, at a location that makes sense. Um, yes, yes. Okay, and our last conversation there was discussion about the pump system that would be necessary as well as the holding tanks has any more work been done on that chair i'm not sure to be honest when i was talking with uh chris rogers he said that um that we that this hearing would carry over because um you were discussing the country club of fairfield tonight in that um that that you would the agreement with country club of fairfield and mm -hmm. once you had decided on that 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 chris was then going to approach us with regards to that agreement um mm -hmm. and then we would finalize at the next meeting um so uh i'm not sure as the answer to that question i think it was something we were planning on um having all settled for the next meeting yeah, yeah. Yeah, in fact, and I, then we'd I also that... take a look at the agreement, you know, the agreement to, to look it over and, and understand what our obligations would be. Okay. Okay. Any comments or questions while we have attorney Russo with us tonight? Okay. Good luck in uh, with what's going on in the room next door. <laughs> I'm going to go over there now. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate okay. I appreciate the it. patience as well. Yeah, yeah. See you. Bye bye. Okay. Um, so we have item C: discussion of the proposed policy to request new sewer line extensions. I don't think we have anyone from Carriage Drive, do we? No, so I, I might, in the interest of saving uh, Chris Pierce and Dennis Divert some time and apologizing for skipping over item F, if if we could make a motion to move item F in front of item C, and then we could get to the funding and engineering agreement for the wastewater treatment plant upgrade. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to move Item F, where we moved it under old business, last item under old business, above item C in old business. Second, Matt, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Quinn, aye. Okay. Chris and, and Dennis, sorry for the, uh, sorry for making wait even uh, even longer. Um, been, we've been looking forward to this update. Thanks for joining us this evening. Happy St. Thank Patrick's you. Day. And um, it's nice that we got uh, such speedy approval from the state. So where do we go from yes. here? Well, I guess the um, the next steps would be, I, I'm not sure if the town has determined how they would fund the engineering the two options would be you could fund it um you could self-fund it out of your your budget and then when you go to the construction phase when you apply for the clean water fund at that point you can apply to be reimbursed for any grant percentage that of the design engineering amount. The other option would be to try and do a separate design engineering agreement. Bill, what are your thoughts on this bill? Uh, I think what Chris is, and we could also roll that other 80% into the project too, for the 2% under the clean, uh, the 20, the uh, uh, loan at 80%. Um, for the remaining 
um, um, yeah, the design. So, I guess the one of the biggest differences between the two approaches is if you if you want to apply for a separate engineering grant and loan for the design phase, then you would need to appropriate the funding for the entire project, the, the capital construction cost, as well as the engineering cost in order to get that engineering approval. Uh, if you hold off and apply for the reimbursement of the engineering grant when you go for the construction application, it allows you to get further through the design process and further refine your numbers before you have to go to whatever kind of referendum or appropriation for the construction dollars, I guess. So that's kind of the trade-off. Plus you only have one agreement, so you're not dealing with your bond council and all those folks on two separate agreements and things. So there's pluses and minuses. Um, but yeah. like Bill said, you can get a, a loan. If you do the separate application for the design phase, you would get a, a grant and a loan. And that would get rolled into a, you know, 20 year, 20 year payback at 2%. <coughs> The um, scope of services was approved rather quickly, probably at least in my lifetime, never seen anything that quick approved from <laughs> DEP. Uh, moving forward, if we go for approval through DEP, that may, you know, lengthen the time rather than doing it ourselves. And then hopefully being like, uh, I think Chris and I spoke before about uh, being shovel ready with our project, you yeah. know, on the priority list for the, for the state and then having funding. And I know Joe alluded to it too, with part of the uh, Biden's COVID act was there was infrastructure money going to be available. And obviously that's gonna trickle down. And what ha usually normally happens is that trickles down to the state revolving fund. And then yep. the DEP has to apply that. Now yep. they have to apply it to projects that are ready. So if yep. you're ready and, and yep. then, and I know that uh, John Marsilio also said that the Biden administration will probably follow what the Obama administration did in, in, in doing, you know, American projects and things like yeah. that, getting infrastructure projects ready and, and going to, to, to help with employment and things of that nature. Yeah. yeah. So if, if you're ready to go, yeah. you know, there, there are large, large projects on a lot of the major cities yeah. with CSO projects and things that uh, separation projects and large scale projects that, that are years out. So if you can move ahead of them because you're ready, that's so, when the funding becomes available for you. So how do we get ready quickly? I mean, we've kind of been in ready mode for the last five years. So how do we get really ready? Yeah, well, we're, I guess we're, we're ready from the perspective of the, uh, I believe the WPCA had approved the agreement prior to us sending it to the DEP. Correct. Now the DEP has approved the agreement and indicated that, you know, the full amount would be eligible for funding if they have the money available. Yeah. Um, I think so now it would be, you know, de determining if you were how you're going to fund the engineering piece of it and. Um, yeah, you know, we'd be ready to move forward. Yeah, I think 2 discussions for us determine it is. Whether we want to fund it ourselves. Uh, or as we funded the uh, facilities plan, which was, I think, 50% WPCA, 50% town money. And how that the town has to move, wants to move forward with funding the design and obviously the construction of the treatment facility. What, what so design is complete. What are we, is it still in the range of $4 million or so? Yeah, I it's it still. 4.7. Okay. Well, that, yeah, but that was 4.7 without any environmental. <laughs> yeah, now we, we did yeah. have, we updated when we did this back in October, we updated our, our scope. So we do have under our geotechnical task that we would conduct environmental sampling. 
an analysis in conjunction with soil borings to determine if contaminated or hazardous soils materials may be present. So we do have that okay. in our well, scope it, now. It, it sounds like a, a good portion of this is going to be reimbursable and that it behooves us to get this project ready. So, you know, we're fortunate that we have Nancy on the line tonight also. And, you know, what, given the inner workings of the town, what's the, what's the most expedient path forward? Because it's, it's, it's not a $4 million pie that we're looking to split. It's going to be 50 or 60 million. So how, how do we get out of the starting blocks? Are you asking me that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Nancy, Nancy and Bill. You know, I mean, you're, ask, very... you're literally ask, asking the $60 million question. And I, I so think... We had met with, Bill, who did we meet with? Tom. Yeah, we met Robert, with Tom. Yeah. Uh, okay. It was... That's, it was probably yeah. about six months ago, maybe. So he's aware of of what we're trying to do, I believe. Yeah. Well, that's that's that was the pushing off point because he said, basically, he was tired of hearing about this project that's been sitting out here now for, you know, several years. We have to either decide that that number is going to start being t um, taken and 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 moved ahead in the right. waterfall, or or we have to decide whether we're just going to, you know. Not do it, but obviously, no, no. look, yeah, we, we, we're going to do it at this Bridgeport's moving faster than us these days on this. So. <laughs> it's time to, it's oh, time that's to, low. to, that's a hurt. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's time to move it forward. So, how, you know, you know, what's the, uh, it, it's the middle of budget season. It's going to be complicated, but I think getting back on Tom Bremer's agenda. And sort of saying, okay, it's time to kind of hit the pavement on this one. Is that maybe something that we can make a motion to put onto the board of selectmen's agenda at their next meeting? Yeah, but I would also give Tom Brummer the heads up to let him. I, I, I mean, do we have to make a formal motion or can we go to Tom Brummer sort of work the back channel? And then if that's what's recommended. Ultimately, yes, it has to get on the board of selectmen agenda, but I think we, before we force the hand, have to, I think, give him the courtesy of just sort of yeah. saying, we're here again, and this is how we want to move forward. I, I don't want to force his hand. No, I, I think you're right. I think we can do that, but I think he, he's more or less the one that was pushing this along. <laughs> so, so, Mr. Chair, can we sort of get a sense of the commission, uh, an unofficial vote? Are we looking at a 50 50 split or are we looking at the WPCA paying for this? What's our feeling? Yeah, I think when we say paying for this, this being not just the uh, right, the scope this of is services, a small piece but, of a bigger puzzle. Yeah. 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 And, and recognizing when we say 50 50, I know I say this often, <laughs> but it's not really 50 50. 70% of the town is on the sewer, 30% is not. So when the town picks up 50%, it's it's counting those who are already on the sewer. So it's really more like 85, 15. Um, so those those of us who are not on the sewer, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll voice and think. Um, can, Bill, can I yeah. ask you as, as we're, Thinking on this, how was it left six months ago, you know, with Tom Brummer? Like, do we actually need to formally kind of can we assume that this is just a carryover of that conversation? Because then maybe we don't have to be so. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. I believe that uh, Chris so and Dennis were at that meeting, and, and that's how we, he said, to start the ball in motion. That's how we uh, did the scope of services when we got that passed. So all right, so then it actually is like, okay, now we're coming back to you. We are ready to get it on the agenda. So I don't think we need to revisit. I'm going to amend what I said that he's, he's kind of been waiting for us to say, okay, we're ready to get this yeah. on the agenda. Yeah. I think we need to approve it, push it forward yeah. and, yeah. and elected officials will, will, will chime in on 
what an equitable share is in terms of cost splitting. Sorry, I, I, I amended my original approach. So, and so we're, one, we're voting on the on design for the improvements for the treatment plant. That's that's correct. Okay, and the where? So I didn't. I apologize. I didn't see the facilities plan. When did that come out? Oh, two thousand eighteen, maybe seventeen. Yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's on the it's on the town website, I believe. It's on okay. the, so, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the brochure that was in the the, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. This, the meeting materials, and I was just curious, like. Um, I mean, not to go down a rabbit hole or anything, but as far as like the digester building, I mean, was there any consideration to look at resource recovery, um, CHP systems or any of that kind of stuff? I'm yes. just thinking yeah. as far as like selling points for the city, obviously anything we can do to have an actual like payback on the system where it actually generates revenue as opposed to being a cost yeah, that yeah. makes it a full didn't point. really didn't really uh calculate out that we, way but we did look at it it, it is okay. in there um okay. and we yeah. will be doing some of that stuff per ed bowman to keep up with what he's been doing in town okay yeah we did have um i guess at the time of the facilities plan we'd estimated potentially up to a 200 kilowatt CHP engine. Okay. Again, we'll we'll revisit that during the preliminary design to see exact sizing and things, but it is in the in the current scope. Okay. Yeah, I mean from the brochure, obviously I can see nitrogen removal was considered, so that's great. Um, obviously replacing aging undersized equipment is good. So thinking about future growth. I just wanted to make sure yeah. we're thinking of resource recovery and that kind of stuff too. Mm -hmm. I, I would imagine yeah. there'll be with with the um, with the Biden agenda money becoming available. There will be conditions and caveats um, that are put forward with that that we will need to incorporate into the design of the plan if we want to participate in in getting access to that money. Okay, I guess one last question on it would just be related to like any kind of innovation on the controls side for the facility. Has any of that either been considered or will it be during, I guess, like basis of design phase? Yeah, what, what, yeah, what are you being? Just, I mean, just like, just, I, it, it, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, yeah, part of our, our scope will be an overall look at the plant-wide instrumentation and controls in the SCADA system. Um, a big focus of that will be especially on how the aeration system is controlled and the, the DO is controlled throughout the aeration tanks to try and look for energy savings. Um, okay. uh, J.K. Muir, I believe, has all, already done a study, Bill? Yes. Yes, they've done a study so, and we, we've used them on other things that we've, we've, we've gone ahead and and change. We've done a lot of changes yeah. since this time too, and you know, yeah. we'll be looking at all of that. And part of that other thing, Matt, is is a lot of um, the power companies are, are are giving you know energy buyback stuff for for energy efficient uh, uh, motors and, and and pumps and and systems. Yeah, and, right. and a lot of the the controls that you mentioned can qualify for those energy. Uh, rebates as well, right. not just the equipment, but the the controls as well. So, okay, uh, we would work with her and the utilities to try and maximize the amount of uh, rebate funding as well. Yeah. Okay. We I just, to, to, oh, go ahead. We go just ahead, replaced. Bill. We just replaced two mixers in in our aeration tank. We we haven't done them. We haven't put installed them yet. And I met J.K. Muir did the study on that, and we got almost fifty percent of the money for the. Uh, cost of those two mixers. Okay, great. It was, um, great. it was really good. Have we done any baseline data capture as far as energy so that we can report back on all the savings after all these upgrades? I mean, it's been done. It was done for 2016 or 2015 through 18, but there's, I don't know, it hasn't been being done currently. That's yeah. the, you know, yeah. like yeah. it. And we have added some stuff that's been more energy efficient and we've I don't think that that was taken into account with the um, fuel cell 
wasn't I think online then was it Dennis? No, it wasn't. No, no. Okay, but I, I I'd imagine that we already had, we've got like the monthly energy bills. We can go back and oh, kind of. I just I think that that would probably yeah. be a good story to tell, especially anytime you're asking for money to show where you've been saving money. Just tell yeah. that. Helps and, that and as you speak to that, we uh, Ed, and Dennis brought up Ed Bowman's name. He's been very influential in that. We have a lot of solar down there. That's that's uh, uh, tied into our facility along with uh, the fuel cell. Okay, good. Thank you. So, Bill, I, I'm I'm personally a bit reluctant to approve something without looking at a line item uh, spreadsheet. You know, when when we get into the millions of dollars, um, we we we've obviously talked about this for years. Um, we're we're all pretty up up to speed or getting up to speed. Could we bring an a a budget for the engineering agreement forward next month? And while we're doing that, back channel with the power the the appropriate folks in the town to indicate that this is yep. you know we're we're full steam ahead going forward. Yeah, I think that's an excellent idea. And and, and like Nancy alluded to before, it's budget time, so I'm not so so much sure a lot of eyes would see it right now anyway. So you know, hopefully, you know, we bring it back next month, and uh, we're we're through the, you know, um, board of finance, and just about to the RTM, and then, um, then maybe the uh, board of selectmen will have a little more time on their their hands to 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 look at something like that. Do you agree, Nance? Sorry, I was having trouble unmuting because I was chewing. Yes. <laughs> I, I I will say that you know the town of Bridgeport. I saw the headline. I didn't read the article a couple of days ago that you know sewer bills expected to triple over the next couple of years based on upgrades to the to their infrastructure. Um, so I'm sure a number of people have read that, and the obvious question will be what will the sewer rates go to increase um, over the next few years to pay for these upgrades. Um, so, Joe, that, that model that you had, um, could you bring that to the commission next month and allow us to kind of ground ourselves in, in what those rates might look like over the next few years? Sure. I appreciate that. Can I, can I ask a question? Of course. So, uh, can you explain again your every town is different so you've got the board of selectmen it's got a what is the process board of selectmen board of finance rtm what's that whole process again for you folks that's it board of, oh i got it right that's yeah it. literally exactly that um <laughs> okay something th some things occasionally bypass one department or one body or another but typically it's board of selectmen board of finance rtm i don't okay. think anything skipping with this magnitude yeah, no, we'll yeah. be skipping. <laughs> I, it, well, exactly, but yeah. But Nancy, will we as a commission have to make a recommendation, fifty-fifty, or we're paying it all, or we want the town to pay it all, or how do you? I mean, I think this is that? where the this is where the Tom Bremer of it all comes in. Okay. Um, and that's there's the rub. I mean, certainly, I can go and ask anything, you know, anything to be put on the agenda as a select person. But explaining it and getting broad buy-in, um, you know, I'm but one of three. And Tom Flynn approaches this solely through a board of finance type of purview. You know, he's our number data metric guy. Um, and, and, Bre and Tom would better be able to represent what the current administration's appetite is going to be. So... I think it would be important to meet with Bremer in advance. So what we bring forth, could we be more broad in our, what we, we ask rather than have the discussion. Our next, we just had a board of, of selectmen meeting Monday. So we have a couple of weeks to get on the next, we have, well, we have 10 days before the next agenda, I imagine. But I think speaking to the chairman's point that he would prefer to see a spreadsheet about the costs and stuff 
at next month's meeting, then go to the board of selectmen. I don't mean to put words in your mouth, Mark, but is that what you were? Yeah, yeah. I think we, you know, some something of this magnitude, we have to look at it with the with the line items are and discuss it and approve so, it. So, so my point is, is that are we able to bring Tom Bremer into those discussions to get buy-in? Oh, sure. Along Absolutely. the way, yeah. Uh, I so was just gonna... by the time it gets to the board of selectmen, my point being, we'll already have a pulse that it's it's literally a tick box type situation where we just hopefully. Yeah. So yeah, I think some of the hot buttons are focus on um, the soil testing and project management oversight. Those are those are kind of the. the the, the two immediate ones that jump out of me. And if I can add one more contingency, I think we should think about that because we always get accused of underfunding. Yeah, when we do our our budgeting for the overall project, we always we include a contingency for unknown items. And as we progress through the design, we kind of shrink that number. Then we have a separate contingency for those construction change orders that always come up. Yeah, Chris, re yeah. Most, most recently our contingencies have been blowing through the 10 and 15% with ease. Yeah, yeah. And when I put a contingency on a $60 million uh, project, it's a big number. So, yes. Hey, hey, Chris, I don't wanna, I, I don't wanna dive too deep into a technical conversation, but would you, in our and and your experience with the state, and I can't think of any with mine. Is there any chance that what we find in the soils would not be the remediation of the soils would be ineligible for the grant? Do you? I mean, I think that's a question that we need to need answered because sometimes they don't participate in certain things like. You know, for example, Bill, the digesters, if they have to be cleaned, they won't participate in that cost. So it's part of it becomes part of the blended percentage of the grant. So it may go from 20.5% to 20.1 or 22.1% or whatever. It doesn't. I was just curious about the remediation and, and we may not yeah, have I, that answer now, but. I, I don't know the answer. The The things that you're talking about, they don't pay for things that they consider to be maintenance items. Yeah, right. So things like cleaning the grid out of the digesters, if they consider that something well, that you should be doing every X many years, so they they're paid, not going to. Yeah, they paid for PCB remediation on our, our past project. So it should be, I would think it would be eligible, but again, well, I mean, it's yeah. down the road, but I just was thinking about that. So. Yeah. Now you, um, Mr. Chairman, had mentioned a spreadsheet for the the line items of the uh, the engineering fees. Yeah. Um, so in our draft agreement, it, there's Exhibit B, which includes a bunch of um, basically breakdowns of the different phases of the design, and it lists out based on the different labor categories, our estimated number of hours and costs and our expenses and sub consultants and things like that. We can certainly provide you more detailed information than this. We have a much more detailed spreadsheet we use to come up with this, but I just, um, you know, whatever you want to see, we can provide, but didn't know if that was a good starting point for what you were looking for. Yeah, I wish I had that in front of me. It, it, it okay. sounds, it sounds logical that that would be sufficient. Okay. Um, yeah, it's broken down by preliminary design, final design. Um, one of the things that you have to do any project over $10 million, if you get DEP funding, you've got to go through value engineering where you bring in another, um, another consultant basically to review the design and the way we've set this up is um, that that other consultant would be part of our like we would 
hire a value engineering consultant to come in. So that's included in our costs. You have to do that twice, right, Chris? We've got, yeah, one after the preliminary design and then one after the 60% submittal. Okay. So, yeah, again, those I, are all I, broken I down going, at the end of the agreement. Yeah. I recall going through it, but it was probably three years ago. Yeah. And, um, and back when when, yeah. when we had the uh, public open house or town hall that no one showed up for. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, just I was just going to suggest if, if you took a look at that and if you wanted more information, then, you know, Bill can let us know what you're looking for. I think that's a great idea. Okay. Any comments, questions? Okay, great. Thanks for staying with us. We appreciate sure. it. Is there anything you need from us to to help present to the next board or commission? No, I think next month we will um, maybe we'll circulate that a few days uh, prior to, in advance of the meeting, and then if we need you to join us, we'll ask you to join us. Otherwise. I expect that we'll approve it and I'll, while contemporaneously working through the internal approvals in town. Um, so I do think that the rumor will get out that there is government funding for these types of projects uh, for those who were who move quickly. And uh, I'd like to be be part of that pack. Yeah, I, I just think it's important for everyone to understand that this whole process is it's probably a two plus yep. year process from the time we start till the time they stick a shovel in the ground. So, so okay. we have four years of bus. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. 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 Almost shovel okay. ready. Okay, great. Thanks guys. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Good night, Chris. Good night, Dennis. Good night, Good night. guys. Joe, yeah. will you will, uh, Joe, will you take us through item C, the dis, uh, discussion on the proposed policy relative to new sewer line extensions? This okay, is, uh, uh, let me put it up in front of me if you don't mind. Sure. Joe's kind of Joe's run point on this. We thought it'd be more of an iterative conversation with the Carriage Drive folks tonight. Um, I think. Um, it will be a more singular discussion amongst the commission. Um, and this is relative to uh, extending sewer lines in the neighborhoods that have existing homes who um, obviously have septics because they're not tapped into the, the system already and how we would go about uh, sharing the expense of um, allowing them to access the sewer system. Joe. Right. So, just as a 40,000 foot overview, the first part of the, the policy talks about our overarching principles. It's our ability to uh, say no if somebody comes to us, uh, basically. So in the, in the policy I put, if there were fewer than X number of houses on the proposed line, the commission will not consider the request. We as a commission have to come up with a number that we feel is reasonable uh, to put into that uh, so that we could just walk away. If, if, if two homeowners come to us, uh, it's probably not worth it for us to extend a sewer line. So there's got to be some some magnitude to the request. In addition, in this, this time and place in Fairfield, if there are soil contaminants required to be removed, we can step away without, uh, that would be another reason for us to say no. And then uh, the other reason would be if there are capacity issues within the proposed area. In other words, we put a pipe in a line, a pipe in the ground, but it connects to some other area in close by that has a uh, capacity issue, we could say no. All that being said, there might be some other things you guys can think of that we should put in there so we could say no. But now let's turn to what if we say yes. So what we wanna do is have some rules in place to have at least 75% of the homeowners on the block or on where the line's gonna be in front of their house have to agree to connect to the sewer line. And uh, we checked with uh, Trumbull, Bridgeport, and uh, Westport, 
and we took some of the best uh, ideas from each one of those uh, uh, towns to, to include in ours. Uh, if we do go forward, each homeowner must sign a letter of intent indicating their desire to connect to the sewer prior to the pipe construction. And then the final piece is the funding for it. The cost of the design uh, will be paid entirely by the homeowners. The design itself has to be developed by a pre-approved firm and uh, the town does have a list of pre-approved firms. So they, the homeowners would have to pick uh, a design firm that uh, would be uh, approved by the town. In addition, the uh, design must include at a minimum monitoring of the line and soil testing, monitoring of the lines around for capacity and soil testing, much the same way as we, re we require a developer to monitor the lines uh, that they're connecting to. Uh, in addition, we would require the cost of construction to include a 20% contingency to cover, cover cost overruns and any costs over 20%, we would pick up the WPCA. So hopefully we're building a big enough buffer in there. And all these numbers that I'm quoting are subject to discussion and uh, modification. And if the project does come in below the cost estimate, the savings obviously will accrue to the homeowners. The, the big, uh, the brunt of the, the cost would 50% would be of the pipe uh, put in the street would be borne by the WPCA and the other 50% would be borne by the homeowners. The cost of paving as is everything else would be part of the town cost, not the homeowners. Uh, once they installed an, uh, the pipe and connected, uh, we would bond it over 20 years and they would, the, the homeowners that signed up initially would be paying for that over 20 years secured, secured by a lien. And any homeowner that would be on that line who did not sign up would have to pay the full amount when they decided to sign up after their septic system, for example, uh, shut down. Uh, the cost, again, just like our developers, the cost to connect to this new line is the sole responsibility of the individual homeowner. Uh, the paving cost, again, would be ours. And uh, again, it's a 50-50 split. Uh, that's about it and then the homeowners obviously would have to pay the uh, water usage the same way we pay it uh, all the other homeowners pay it today so that's the overview of the policy so the ionized kind of baked into that 50 percent that's not incremental the um, ini the initial ini would be is baked in correct it's not incremental yeah the 4250 that we talk about uh yeah. would not be baked would be baked in would not be uh, charged separately. That's the proposal. So, you know, in, in, in going through Carriage Drive, you know, the minimum expense to the homeowners is going to be at least a hundred thousand dollars, and plus or minus, um, it's expensive to to do the the upfront work and and then to put the the pipes in the ground. So the the issue that I think we're we're going to see with a lot of these neighborhoods are People are going to say, you know what? I'd rather just wait. I'd rather wait until my septic fails, and then there might only be two or three who's who who are you know need to tap in, um, and they don't want to pay the full the full brunt. You know, that's three people, thirty thirty three thousand dollars. Granted, paid over time, so a lot of work went into into. Um, into this, um, Chris and Joe, um, I think it's a solid policy. I'd, I'd, I'm curious if there's comments or questions. Um, and, uh, and and just to be abundantly clear, this this isn't for new developments like the Sasco Hill development. So I, I think it looks good. Um, my only comment would be related to the overarching principle. Instead of having it just be a, a blanket number, I would almost think it would make more sense to do a minimum number of houses per X number of feet of pipe being committed. Mm -hmm. Like if, if one person's looking to be connected, but there's only 50 feet of pipe or something, that's something we might even want to consider versus if it's 
two houses, but 400 feet of pipe, that's a bigger cost per unit per house versus the, the shorter run to accommodate one house. I don't know if that's getting too complicated, but. Well, yeah, I is, think we, that we can, the, yeah, sorry. The, the economics kind of sort out some of these anomalies as we're seeing with carriage draws that um, unless they get at least five homeowners likely to to agree to this immediately, not like two now and three maybe later, right? It's right. it's just it's not going to pencil out for them. So this is Quinn. Do we need to um, put more detail into uh, the wording? Uh, will be assessed by the WPCA commission. Do we have to spell out what we're actually going to charge them? In other words, are they going to pay the same great, amount as their neighbor neighbor did? Quinn, it's a it's a great question, and we we've we've literally we probably spent hours trying to figure out what the algorithm is, and we kind of landed on you got to leave it to the commission to figure it out because. We At could the spend the rest. It comes up. It, okay. It, yeah. Okay. I it's... understand. So as far okay, as then, as long as I've been on the to, commission, do we have to vote? Do, do we have to vote to put this into play? That would be our first new policy in <laughs> probably a decade. Right. Yes, we would need to uh, affirmative, affirmatively vote. So I guess we just have to fill in the X for a number of houses. Right. And then other than that, if, unless there's no edits, then this thing would be good to go. So fewer than four. Yeah, but we used carriage drive rule, as an example, so that was six. It says, yeah, but it's yeah. under the rules, it says 75%. So on the whatever 75% is of the street or the length of the pipe, I guess. Well, you could you could get a street like Hillside that, you know, it could be hundreds of houses. You know, the sewer just ends at one part of Hillside. And so... Well, four is the minimum number that we can actually accommodate 75% as a whole number. <laughs> <laughs> Good point, Matt. But we can yeah. use we can use fractions. Yeah. I mean, four feels like the right number. I mean, we, we can choose to not consider the request regardless, couldn't we? Or do we have to? Consider it if it's if three well, out we're of trying not, we're trying not to be arbitrary. If okay, that that's the problem. We we just right. don't want to say they came and you know somebody else point to it and say, well, you did it for them. Why not us? Right. So we want to have some way out. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure we even need it because I think the economics kind of settle the, the the score. That if it, I agree. I I think four is fine. I can't yeah. imagine that three out of four houses would even be willing to pay for the design costs. So, right. Yeah. I so think four is a good number. Can, yeah. Okay. I can tell you a situation that happened. Uh, we're here to this wrong. Uh, we didn't have any gas on, on this road. <clears throat> and one of my neighbors wanted to put in gas with mm -hmm. the Southern Gas. And then Southern Gas said, well, unless you can get X amount, and I've been half of the street, to say they want to hook up the gas, then we're not going to do it. And they, 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 did, they did their runs based on length and based on volume, how many are going to hook up. I don't know what their algorithms are, but 
that's that's what was done here. It, 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 Ron next door had to wait until they get about four or five people signed up for gas before they come out and dig up the road. Yeah. Yeah, it's an expensive proposition. Okay. Want to make X4? I already did. Oh, okay. <laughs> While I was away. <laughs> Is there a motion? Well, I have to make the motion too. Come on, guys. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that the commission uh, adopt the policy for uh, residents requesting a sewer line in their road as presented at the meeting on March 17th, 2021. Modified second. sewer houses. Second. Second by Matt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, Aye. Joe, and you would never deprive us of your beautiful eloquence, would you? With your emotions. Come on. Just remember, I'm the flush king, as, as deemed Joe, by Nancy. Joe, I know I, how I was, much work went into that, and I thank you. No problem. I was tempted to make my first motion, Joe, but I figured you're better. <laughs> your owners are going to thank you as well. Okay, an Joe, update I on believe... current projects. Bill, take okay. us th take us through, and why don't we start with the um, East Trunk Interceptor? Um, uh, we we've um, Chris put out uh, an RFP for um, environmental work, some soil sampling. Uh, we got four proposals was sent out, uh, and we got four proposals. I don't think we've seen the numbers yet. Um, been, the, the testing was sent out to four different firms that hasn't returned yet. So we're waiting to see what those numbers are going to come back as. It, um, I, I can't remember the exact number. It was over 100 samples that he was looking for along that stretch. Okay. So um, to, to, to refresh, this is a $7 million plus project. Over along uh, Ash Creek, over by Vinnie's Ale House, it came up in the conversation with 159 uh, Post Road today. Um, it's approximately what about half a mile of uh, pipe replacement, and this number could escalate dramatically if we don't learn a few things from recent experiences, such as the soil issues and the hardening project. It's a project mm -hmm. that needs to get done. There's a lot of I and I. Um, and this coming in, we think through uh, through this area, um, it will be a major project that's undertaken uh, by this commission over the next, you know, year or two. Okay. Next. Now, Mr. We'll Chair, can I just ask a quick question? We talked about the uh, shovel-ready projects. This one's obviously more shovel-ready than the plant upgrade. Yeah, that's a good point. With this one, could we talk about this one qualifying for some federal funds comes trickling down from that 1.9 trillion? Yeah, that's a great point, Joe. Who, how do uh, we go about that, uh, Bill? I think we, we could, um, we'd have to go to the state now, the difference between collection system and pump station work and treatment plant work uh, that comes through the state from the state revolving fund is collection system and pump station work is, is only loan eligible. So there'd be no grant involved in that. Okay, and when you get to a loan, if I'm not mistaken, you got to use their contractors, et cetera, et cetera. You, ha well, my, that, you have to I follow all of their, the letter of their laws. You have to follow... Right. Uh, low bidder and things like that. So you can't sole source yeah. or things like that. They're very, they're very particular about who, sole sourcing things. You have to really be mm -hmm. um, on on ball to to do that. Right. Okay. But, Thank um, you, Bill. You've answered my question. And and then we've talked about this before. You know the way the money's available now. It's almost you know not worth going that route. Okay. Um, 
the mill we'll go back, now we'll go alphabetically i guess uh, a mill river pump station generator uh, it is still uh, waiting for the gen uh, the um, gas company just to hang that last piece of the meter and then we'll fire that uh, generator up and uh, decommission the old one so um, I still um, haven't heard anything from the gas company yet so um, B status of the uh, update of the uh, wastewater treatment plant generator uh, testing was done by a uh, tie and bond um, we're waiting for the results of that um, they did some uh, filling in they, they they have all the structure and then they they filled in the, um, the wall uh, the, the, the cabinet space with uh, um, dirt and, and and rock and and compacted that to now when they can start pouring the slab so hopefully we'll be pouring the slab shortly uh, again you know we have to get this done because this these grants are only good till uh, June 30th of 2021. Um, I'm not sure if I have to speak any more on the hardening. I think we had a pretty good oversight from Paula. Um, um, Laura, I don't think uh, I can do it any more justice than she did. Um, uh, Eastern Turnpike uh, Pump Station. Uh, Dennis was on. I didn't want to keep him any longer, but um, one of the critical, uh, critical aspects was for them to dig down 20 feet, put a new uh, manhole structure in, uh, for the incoming line from Je the Jefferson side before the pump station. Um, they, they And it was very difficult because they had to go right next to the, for the existing force main, which they did, and they had to go down and expose the existing incoming line to the pump station. They've done that. That incoming uh, pump station was roughly, top of pipe was 18 feet. They had to go underneath that another an additional two feet for bedding material when they replace everything and put the new manhole structure in it. But just to the, the uh, left and right of that that pipe where it was put in was all ledge. <laughs> they were, they were 20 feet, 18 feet down and they had to jackhammer out. They've been doing it for about a week, the rest of that rock to to, to make a, 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 a level surface to where they could put the st crush stone and then put the, the manhole base down so that they can run the uh, the sewer through the through the manhole and into the pump station. Uh, they're, they're planning on putting that uh, manhole base in place tomorrow. So hopefully that'll be taken care of and then everything should really start flowing from there. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> um, also, uh, the uh, conduit uh, new duck bank was run. Uh, we'll wait. New I is has scheduled now for next Thursday to come in and run their, um, their wires uh, in the conduit so that uh, they can do their terminations and then we can take out that old duck bank and then they can start building the building next to the uh, the wet well and the pump chamber. Uh, so everything's starting to really starting to go on that. Um, Eastern Turnpike Force Main, obviously we've talked about this before, the, the Force Main is complete. Uh, it was completed back in December, but that we couldn't do any road restoration until uh, beginning of April. Uh, Dennis has set out a whole list of things that needed to be do done by True Blue. Um, that will commence uh, starting April 1st or, you know, they have to put some planning, curbing, repaving and things of that nature and the state won't let them get in there till at least April 1st, maybe April 15th, depending on the weather. So uh, we're, we're still on schedule with that and on budget with that. Um, we talked about the Eastern Tron um, interceptor sewer relocation. Um, status update of the Riverside Drive uh, siphon replacement. I have not um, heard any of that. Unfortunately, I didn't think quick enough. We could have asked Laura about that because she's one of the lead engineers on that also. But I haven't heard any other news on that yet. And, and I did uh, voice our concerns about the the, uh, the price and and um, the three barrels, you know, instead of the existing two and things of that nature. Uh, the uh, WPC AFO repair. Um, we received uh, four FPs for the environmental work. Um, tie and bond was the lowest. Um, I think it was like 5,600 for them to do the soil analysis uh, 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 on that line. So that, that should be commencing shortly. And hopefully maybe we'll have results uh, by next month's meeting. Um, we're still working with the town uh, attorney to require the right to enter. I know Chris has sent several letters to the, the homeowner to try to get that uh, right to enter um, sign so we can go in and, and do this work. Um, East trunk line, uh, the, the contract was awarded and uh, 
contracts are being signed. I know there was some stuff going back, uh, W-9s, things of that nature, uh, front-end documents from um, DNB engineers to to sign their contract. So we should be uh, well on our way by next month's meeting with meeting with that and getting getting some kickoff meeting with them to to go ahead and start their uh, their design work on that uh, section of pipe. Um, we just discussed uh, J, the wastewater treatment facility, so I don't need to, I think I need to go over that. Um, there's no update on the Upper East uh, Trunk Interceptor. The microgrid, um, the additional funding uh, funding was approved. Yankee uh, Electric, who who is doing the work for Schneider, was on site yesterday looking at all the, the things that they need to do. Um, they're uh, also lining the work up with Holzner, because Holzner's doing the contaminated soil work uh, over by the RAS building. Um, so they're they're in the process of getting anything moved. Um, like I said, Yankee Electric was on site with one of uh, Schneider's elect, um, engineers to go ahead and start uh, remobilizing on this project. Um, pipe size reduction in Stratfield Road. Uh, we have no update on that. Um, Uncle Road, I asked Chris about that. Uh, I think they're they're still working with the um, um, DEP and the utilities to see about, to, you know, what they have to do to re relocate and get around all the utilities over there. It's uh, quite a maze in that section of the road. Um, Mill River pipe pump station, that uh, corrosive pipe that we brought Ray Pearson to take a look at. We, we've we done some work just by environmental uh, um, engineering, uh, putting in that uh, dehumidifier has dried up the air down there. So we're not, we cleaned the pipe we, we, and uh, we're not seeing any kind of more corrosion on it. So that's basically um, where we're gonna stay for, for now and see where that pump station lies next in you know up, up, upgrading it. But uh, for right now, it seems that the dehumidifier has been taking care of the issues with the uh, corrosions around the fittings and the um, joints. Uh, phase two and phase four of the rehabilitation projects. Phase um, phase three, uh, we received the bids back. National Water Main, who did the phase one work uh, on the INI uh, with low bidder. We expected the bids to come in at about 220, 225. It came in at about 180, 185. So finally, we get a little break on one of these projects. Um, so, and they did a really good job. Um, both contractors that did, did phase one and phase two did a good job. So, we weren't hesitant about uh, awarding the contract to uh, National Water Main. So that they're in the process of signing the contract and things of that nature. And then we'll go ahead with that. Um, once that's taken care of, we'll see if we'll have, uh, I think, like I said, we'll have some funding left. We may be able to do some other work through that contract through, through change order if we if we want to, because we have, we'll have funds available. And then the phase four work will be put right out to bid probably, you know, Late May, early June, because the phase four will will use next year's budget money for the I and I work. Any questions? I just have one on the national water. When do when do we expect we'll have some data from them? Uh, I, I I I assume they'll sign the contract and then they'll want to get going right away. Uh, so I, I think we'll start seeing. Um, they're in town probably in the next three weeks. Okay. Great. And to, Matt, to a point that Matt made earlier, I think having a baseline prior to doing some of this I and I work will mm -hmm. be very helpful. I think the baseline, what they're based on is those uh, that I and I work that Wright Pierce did back in, I think, 2018, where they had the 40 um, meters located all through the town and that's how we were we we're picking and cherry picking spots right. where we saw high infiltration and things of that and, and, and manhole inspections so we're, we're heading into inflow season yeah <laughs> this is this is the time well I tried Mr. To... can i ask bill one quick question on the cinto project have we heard anything back from rob as far as what they're planning I have not heard anything back from Rob. I did. I did. Um, I'm on another um, board that uh, that meets monthly, and the the, the company that did the um, PVing of that line uh, initially for for Rob asked me the same question. 
I said we haven't heard anything. The, the, the thing that we were looking at doing was, you know, isolating that line, bypassing it, and then teeing it when it's dry to see if there's any, you know, um, structural repairs that need to be done or any any um, inconsistencies within the line. But I have not heard from Rob or or, or any from from the Cinto uh, Corporation. Okay, thank you. All right, I thought I could spring you guys by nine. I came close, <laughs> came very close. Thanks everyone for staying with us. A lot going on. Ron, great to have you back. Hope you uh, your voice gets better and let's hope we can start having these meetings in person. Mr. Soon. Chair, can you cover just the last agenda item just to check it off? I know Bypass. there were bypasses. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, no bypasses. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion. Please. To adjourn. Okay. Second that motion. I'll second. There's a mic yeah. second. <laughs> <laughs> Unanimous. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patty's. Yeah, enjoy it. Bye.